Model steam engines top tip time. This is part 11. In this series I'm trying to feature some of the jobs that viewers often ask me questions about. This episode is about repairing and painting damaged parts. And in this episode I'm rebuilding a Stuart Models beam engine. The mounting base of this engine is a bit of a mess. It's been badly damaged at some time and brazed back together. And although the brazing is of good quality, it's still a bit lumpy on the outside and on the inside. So I'm starting first with my 4 inch belt sander and now I'm moving on to my 1 inch belt sander to remove all the lumpiness on the outside of the casting. When using a belt sander as I'm showing in the video clip on screen at the moment you have to be very careful not to take too much of the metal away. And it's quite difficult to control a big lump of metal up against a moving sanding belt and it's very easy to dig lumps out of the casting and I don't want to do this because I'll only have to fill them. I think for this job I do prefer to use a file. I have more control and I can actually see what I'm doing. This is a new file. I bought it from Blackgates Engineering a while ago and I haven't used it until now. And because it's very new, it's very sharp. And in no time at all I knock the casting into shape. I'm going to try and paint this part without removing all the old paint and just see what happens. I'm spraying it with some etching primer. This brand of etching primer is my current flavour of the month. It's from a company up north here called Auto Paint Northern. That's their website address on the screen. This is a really high quality paint. It covers beautifully and once it's stuck to the metal, it's really stuck to the metal. What I'm concerned about though is the fact that there is still some original paint on this piece of metal and I think it's reacting with the etching primer. The original paint is starting to bubble, so there's only one thing for it. I put the spray can into reverse and then I unpaint the part. If only it was so easy. No, I actually used a cloth to wipe off the paint whilst it was still wet. What I'm going to have to do is remove this paint. So first of all I'm starting with my finger which is never a good idea. And then I move on to some very coarse sandpaper and this is tearing the paint off the piece of metal. The way I normally remove paint from small steam engine parts is to immerse them in a tub full of this stuff, standard cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner. But unfortunately this part will not fit in the tub, so I'm applying the thinners with a paintbrush and then I'm scrubbing it off with a wire brush. And this is very labour intensive, very messy and very smelly. And one more time it's worth remembering that if you're doing a job like this you need to do it in a very well ventilated area. I'm in the outer part of my workshop, right next to a wide open door. I live in a small village in the East Riding of Yorkshire. That's in the north of England, and luckily in the village, right at the bottom of the village, is a place called Powder and Paint. And guess what they do? They do sandblasting, shot blasting, and powder coating. So I took this repaired beam engine base down to Mark at Powder and Paint, and this is how it came back. I was very pleased and very surprised when Mark said, I'll come back in a couple of hours and I'll have it done for you. And here it is. You can see the quality of the braze. The braze is quite good. This, of course, is after I filed and sanded the braze joint. And here's a shot a few hours afterwards and the paint has dried. As you can see, though, it's still not a good finish. I'm going to need to fill this. But before filling it, I would generally use etch primer first. That way you can see where you're filling. I'm not going to use car body filler though, I'm going to use JB Weld, which is a very strong two-pack epoxy resin. This is a 24-hour version, so it takes 24 hours before it cures. And here's a shot of me mixing it together. It's a two-pack mix, but you must make sure that you mix the parts very evenly. Initially, I'm applying the JB Weld using the mixing stick. This is a piece of mahogany planking, like I would use on a model boat. It's a good idea when filling any imperfections in metal not to apply too much filler because don't forget you have to rub it down. And this JB Weld stuff is very tough and it's difficult to rub down sometimes. Although I do have the time and patience and equipment to allow this to be successful. And JB Weld is far stronger than car body filler and it doesn't chip as easily. 24 hours later and the JB Weld is fully cured and all I need to do is just smooth it off a little bit more before we go into a painting frenzy on this as well. A lot of it is handwork. This is the end and I can't really get in properly on the belt sander. It's too easy when using a belt sander 
to accidentally sand grooves in the metal, so I think it's a safer method using a piece of very coarse sandpaper held in my hand. It's much easier to get into the corners and get a good finish this way. For instance, in this area I just wouldn't want to use the belt sander because I would cut a groove in the top of the base and then it wouldn't look very good at all. I use my 4 inch belt sander upon which the part is currently rested, although it's not on as you can see, for sanding edges of pieces of metal, edges of bases like this, and edges of pieces of wood or anything that's nice and flat. But in my workshop I still use files and coarse emery cloth like this. I gave the base an all over sanding treatment, then I blew off the dust with the airline and now it's ready for painting. Even though there isn't too much bare metal showing, there is some bare metal showing, so I'm still using etching primer. I want this paint to firmly stick to this part. It's a bit cold for painting, so as soon as I finish painting this, I'm going to take it into the warmer inner part of the workshop. I just need to ensure that I get full coverage without any drips, runs or sags. And once again the base is on two pieces of wood, which makes it very easy for me to rotate the base to paint the other side. And now as you can see, it's on the bench in the warmer part of the workshop. I will leave this for 24 hours for the paint to dry. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.